what's up guys welcome back to lick break farms it's an absolutely beautiful day here in central north carolina and in today's video we are going to be trellising the determinate tomatoes we planted at the first of march and we're going to use one of the trellising techniques that we use here on the farm we use several but i'm going to show you the florida weave method that we use and we put a little twist to it so you don't want to miss that i'm going to show you that right after this All right, guys, before we get started on the trellising, I want to do kind of a product review for you. Um, I had something happen that I've never you know, had here on the farm. And I bought a fertilizer injector. And um, I use several of them. They're the Nutri in, uh, metering pumps, what it is, basically. I've got one over here on that pole. You can see it over here. It's for this garden. I've got one on a stand down there that a actual subscriber brought to the farm and give us um and that, there's a whole backstory to that now I'll, I'll get into that in another video but there's one on a stand down here by my strawberry field down here and i've got one that i use for the high tunnel well it prematurely failed um a piece broke on the inside and you can buy rebuild kits for these things but uh that part wasn't in the rebuild kit so i kind of reached out to the company through amazon um and a lady contacted me and asked me would i be willing to accept a partial refund and i said of course yeah you know i just i got to buy one anyway so make a long story short they said that they could send me the part that wasn't in the kit and i could fix my own well and it's a part inside of my barn right there right now but um what i got next i wasn't expecting and this goes above and beyond as far as i'm concerned with um, customer service because these things aren't cheap these things are around 300 dollars a pop and they're well worth the money though because you don't have to guess at your fertilizer rate you can basically mix you know five gallon buckets or however much you want to at a time and you can set the dosage on it turn the water on and it pumps itself no matter how far it is no matter how many lines you got it pumps fertilizer through your uh, dosing pump and this is what I'm talking about. This is actually a fertilizer injector. And you can see, this is a brand new unit. And this is what they sent me when I thought I was just getting a part for one. So if you use fertilizer injectors, and you know if you're just a small backyard gardener, you probably wouldn't use one, because like I said, they are a little pricey. But I use them simply because I can mix up five gallons of fertilizer at a time. I can set that dosing pump up. I can walk off and do something else. I don't have to worry about how much is going to it. You can use it on overhead sprinklers. You can use it on uh drip irrigation and i've got one that one specifically for this tunnel here so really all i got to do is come in and this is just a regular one i was using while my other one was broke but you turn the water on this thing goes to clicking and you can hear it and you know that it's pumping fertilizer to your crops you don't have to guess if it's pulling you can hear it clicking just like this it's like timed you can adjust the rate so on and so forth but yeah i thought that was pretty cool and i wanted to kind of make mention of that so if you're in the market for a uh, fertilizer injector and we all know that customer service goes a long way nowadays you know check out nutri they got several different applications they got small ones they got big ones this is kind of middle of the road so it's not the biggest they make and it's definitely not the smallest they make so if you're looking for something to do fertilizer like that that you don't have to guess at all the time check out the nutrients I, I promise you you won't be disappointed and like i said in the earlier part of the video it's an absolutely beautiful day that sun's blinding too got all everything's outside taking a bath in the sunshine you can see all the plants we got left to put in the garden i got some uh beets down here two of these trays two of these trays are going in that row that you see right there sometime today betsy gonna come down and help me plant those after a while and um all the tomatoes and cucumbers and all the other good stuff is out here 
Oh, let me show you this. Been working on up potting cherry tomatoes. And this has been a chore all week. I do a little bit at a time. And you can see there's about 350 out here. And I've still got, I know, a good 2,000 left to do. And we're probably going to work on that a little bit today too. But let me give you a shot of this over here. And then we'll get to this trellis. But yeah, all of these on the end right here, all of these are tomatoes. That's got to be up potted. And I mean, they're ready. You can just grab them and pluck them right out. And see, they're not really, really bad. But they need to go in something bigger. Then I got a few more um, different kind of determinant made. That's a Skyway. I've never planted that one before. Then we got peppers, hot peppers. Uh, I think that's a Celebrity Plus determinant that's going outside. Mountain Magic on the end, and these are Primo Reds. And I've got some more on the inside that we just planted too. So let's get in this high tone. All right, guys, y'all gonna get a kick out of this. So the determinate tomatoes that we planted at the first of March. Today's March 30th. Yeah, March 30th. And these tomatoes are 30 days old. And if you look down through there, I think I said in the video where we planted these, or either the update, I can't remember which, that we would have blooms on these tomatoes before the end of the month. And um, there's plenty of blooms on these tomatoes. And I would not be surprised if I found a tomato on here somewhere. Um, they've had blooms on it for a couple of weeks. And I know I've seen the bees in and out here, so I know they're doing their job. But yeah, if you look down through there, they're just about to outgrow these rails here. When I pull the plastic over it, and I've had to a couple of times this week because the temperatures have dropped, it the, the plants touch the plastic. So, you know, that's kind of a, a bad situation because anytime you get a frost or you get a real hard freeze, any leaves that touch your row covers or your plastic, they tend to get uh, damaged simply because that, that cold can carry through that plastic and uh, actually mess your leaves up. But yeah, these guys need to be pruned on a little bit. You can see on the bottom how shaggy it looks down there. And I'll get into that here in just a few minutes. But first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all this stuff down. I'm gonna take all these hoops down because we don't need them anymore. We will get some more cold uh, nights. I think we got three nights coming in the mid upper 30s towards the end of this week but once i get this florida weave trellis situation set up i can actually drape something over the top of the whole thing if i need to and i've got some i've got some more frost blanket and stuff like that laying around that i can use All right, guys, so we got all the post up. We got everything out of the way. Um, and these things are getting kind of top heavy. You can see uh, this one here. It's a little bit damp from the dew um, moisture in here. But you can see they really want to start leaning. So it's a perfect opportunity for us to go ahead and get these things trellis. And we're going to go through this kind of step by step. It's not hard by any means. It's a little time consuming, but um, it gives us the opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. We can trellis them, and we can get a little bit of pruning done on them, which... You know, we don't prune determinant tomatoes like we do indeterminates. We basically clean the bottom of the the, uh, the stalk off enough to get the twine on it. And we let the rest go crazy. I mean, we just, we don't have time to prune them um, like we do our indeterminates. And it's really not a big deal because these determinants are going to put off so much fruit and then they're going to stop. It's just like it's one and done. And, you know, we leave the suckers on because the suckers will put off fruit too. So we're going to probably come down here about this far and we're basically going to take everything off the bottom of this plant and i'll get a pair of snips and do this but we're basically going to take off just about this much that you see there and that will give us the ability to put that twine about right where my fingers are and that'll do the supporting force now you can see how this thing's wanting to lean over already and if it put on tomatoes and they started growing any at all it would it'd be laying on the ground right now All right, so we're just a few plants in, but I kind of want to give you an idea of where I was going with this. If you can look and see how thick and bushy these plants are, I and mean, if you look at the ones I've done, let me get you on the ground here so you can see through here. You see how it's open in there and how in here it just kind of all jumbled together. This is going to be better for your plants because you can get air in and out of here and it can dry up any moisture that might accumulate on the leaves or 
you know around the base of it to prevent a whole lot of disease and with tomatoes in my opinion most diseases come from moisture um it's just that simple all right guys so we got everything cleaned up all the way down the road and you can see a huge difference in what we started with open it up got some good airflow through there and it's going to give us a good place to put that string along the bottom of those stalks so we can get everything supported just right up under where you see it branching at we'll get right up under there and that's going to give all kinds of support to that plant Remember that conversation we had when I said I liked everything straight? Even my T-post is going to be straight. Alright, so we got the anchors up on each end of it. And um, you want these things in there pretty good. These are six-foot posts and they probably went in the ground. Two foot, three foot maybe. These plants are not going to get that tall. They may get four foot, 48 inches or whatever. The problem is, is that they're going to be so much foliage and so much fruit on it that it's going to put a lot of stress on these strings holding this stuff up. And that brings me to the tip where I told you that we put a twist on our Florida, Florida weave, and I'll show you that when I get ready to do it. But um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get the rigid poles. I used to use wooden stakes, but, I mean, you only get one season out of them because you can't use treated wood. And it's just a pine stake that we put in the ground. You can find oak ones that last a little longer, but they're expensive. Um, so I just went ahead and started buying metal poles. It's rigid conduits, what it is. And I'd get an 8-foot section, 10-foot section, cut it in half. I mean, they're going to last a lifetime. So what we're gonna do is get those and every fourth plant. So we're gonna count one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna put a pole here. So what that's gonna do is give us another anchor point to transfer the tension in this string down this line. So it just gives me another holding point to keep the weight off of it. Um, so we're gonna do that in between every fourth plant. And if memory serves me correctly, we're gonna have one or two plants at the end that'll be on their own. They will still be in string, but they'll just, it is, it's gonna be an odd number, that's all. All right guys, so I got the metal, I ain't got them drove in the ground yet or leveled up or anything, but that's kind of the layout. You can see down through here, um, that was a little wonky, but yeah, I still gotta drive all these in the ground. Get them leveled up, and this is what I was telling you, is gonna be the, the anchor points between four plants um, that kind of take the stress off of the string, transfer that load into the ground to keep everything from kind of getting wavy and heavy on one side and pulling on the other. Like I said, if it wasn't for those poles down the middle of it, about halfway down, everything would still lay on the ground. I mean, that's how heavy they're gonna get. So I'm gonna go down through here now, and I'm gonna drive these things in the ground, get everything leveled up, and then we'll be ready to put the string on. All right, guys, so now we get to the fun part, putting on the string. So what I use, this is just baling twine, baling string. I get mine from Track Supply. You can buy a case of them for like 65 bucks. It's three rolls in here. This is the roll that I began with two years ago when I bought that case of twine. I still got two rolls left. And they go a long way. They're that big around when you get them. So, um, and it works perfect. This, this stuff is pretty durable. And for no longer than these uh, tomatoes are going to be in here, I mean, it'll last years. Um, but we won't need it to. I mean, if I was a, you see it put on round bales and they sit in a pasture for, you know, years and they never bust. But I use it because it's cheap. It's affordable, it's tough, and it does what I want it to do. I use it for this, I use it for cucumbers, I use it for indeterminate tomatoes, I use it for pea trellis, I'm gonna use it for everything. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start, we're gonna anchor this about, we're gonna sight line down through here and see about where all the, the strings need to be on these stalks. And it looks like we're gonna come about right here and we're gonna catch these plants just up under that bottom set of leaves. And some of them's gonna be bigger, some of them's gonna be smaller, but as long as that string's got them, it should be fine. And we want to center that string up in the middle. So when it leaves this pole, it kind of goes down and catches all of them. Now, if you're not familiar with the Florida weave technique, all you're basically doing is going in and out of these plants down this row. See, I went in front of that one, I went behind this one. I'm going to go in front of this one, and I'm going to go behind this one. And we'll get to this pole. We're basically going to make a loop around it. 
to pull that tight and here is where our little twist comes in normally what you would do is continue down that row and you would go in and out of all of these plants and just make one wrap on your anchors in the middle we don't do that we basically go through this section here from this pipe to this pipe we'll anchor around this one we're going to do two turns around it we're going to pull it as tight as we can get it we're going to do two turns around this pole here and we're going to go back that direction so we're singling this section here out on one piece of twine and i'll tell you why because if you run this string all the way down this trellis and you don't anchor it anywhere just on the ends if it breaks in one spot you'll lose that line for the complete run of this tomato uh row and i've had that happen and it wasn't because of anything we done we had a cow get out and come in here and it broke the twine on the bottom row and and they weren't much taller than this and every one of our tomatoes fell over and they had tomatoes on them nice tomatoes and you know it caused a lot of issues when it come to harvesting not saying i mean we don't have cows anymore so we don't have to worry about that but you know not saying that's going to happen but if it were to break for whatever reason a string was a break you lose the whole line and then you've got to deal with that because there's no way you're going to re we retwine it and lift all those tomatoes back up especially if they got fruit on so what we're going to do is come back this away and like i said before remember we were behind this plant so now we're going to be in front of this plant and let me give you a shot of what it's going to look like see when you get here you're going to come in front of it and then we're going to go behind that one and in front of that one and then behind that one so on and so forth and that way we can pin That way we can pin those plants down. We're gonna hold this kind of taut here. Go behind that plant. Go in front of this one. Go behind that one. And then we're gonna get this pole. We're gonna cut that string off. It. We'll pull all the slack out of it that we can first, and then when we get this in, we're gonna kind of pull it tight and lock it down. So yeah, let's see. These guys here are trellis on this one stem, so they can't do this. Now, they can do this a little bit, but once these things start filling up, bushing out, they'll help support one another to keep them from going back and forth. Right, and give you guys a better shot of this. You see where well, we anchored here, we went around, in front, behind, in front, behind, went all the way to this one, made a loop, made a double loop, and it went back that way. So that section is done. If this string were to break, all we got to worry about is this side here. We don't have to worry about the whole thing, just fixing this part or figuring out another way to trellis these four plants, not the whole row. All right, guys, so we knocked that out. We got that first row done. It's trellised all the way down. And like I said earlier, each section is independent of the rest so those four on their own line these four on their own line so on and so forth and we do that in case a string breaks then you don't have to worry about the whole line dropping you can just fix that one little area or you know you won't have issues with the whole line now it's getting a little hot in here so i'm gonna wait till this afternoon to finish that back line but yeah you get the idea and that is just one trellising technique that we use. We use several. And when we get ready to do these cucumbers, you'll see the next. And these Primo Red uh, tomatoes here, we're gonna have to trellis those guys and we'll use the same method we used over here because this is a determinate variety. But uh, yeah, when we get ready to do our heirloom tomatoes outside, we will use a totally different trellising technique. And that one is a little more um, labor intensive but it lasts the whole season so we won't have to worry about it after we get it up the first time just like these um we'll use that same trellis other than the strings whenever with these plants come out we'll cut all these strings leave the pipes in the ground we'll plant the same place we planted these and then we'll do it all over again so that setup right there will last us until last year we had tomatoes in here in december so it'll last us until december of this year all right guys so i got work to do so i'm gonna get off here and get busy but don't miss the next video because i'm gonna explain to you what all these rods here for what all these pipes this inch and three eighths top rail i'm gonna explain what all that is and i'm gonna give you a hint it has something to do with this tunnel over here yeah, that's right we're getting ready to put us up another tunnel this one's gonna be specifically for lettuce or and 
cherry tomatoes and cucumbers so you don't want to miss out on that but guys speaking of tunnels if you want to go back and watch the video when me and betsy put this tunnel up i'll put a link to it up here and if you want to know more about our farm or if you found some information here informative or you found something entertaining click this subscribe button over here in this corner as always guys we appreciate you stopping by we thank you for your support and we'll see you on the next one